May the souls of our ancestors rest in perfect peace. Asen Manso Slave River Site. Most often at times, our brothers and sisters always believed that our ancestors survived all this because we were brave and stronger. Maybe we are, maybe we were, maybe not. But for me, I don't believe in that. I believed we survived this because of a spirit that was with us. That spirit was so special and that spirit kept us going, even when we thought we couldn't continue further. So as Africans as we are, we see ourselves as spirits. So more and more out, we always do more rituals when you visit this particular site. Ascent Manso was documented by one Ghanaian historian in the person of James Akwesi Akwanda. In his book entitled The Trans-Atlantic Slave Trade, Landmark, Legacies and Expectations, he categorically stated that Ascent Manso in here should be seen as a pilgrimage place for all Africans. So that once upon our lifetime, we should always come in here, connect to ourselves, to our souls, and to our spirit. So you realize where you are coming from the gate. <coughs> the gate was very short. So most of us entered in like this. Symbolically, you've already paid your respect to the ground <coughs> before entering. It was also documented in history by one British historian in the person of W.E. Ward in his book entitled The Short History of Ghana as the biggest slave market during the trade. Two markets played the leading role during the trade. One being the second largest was at Salaga in the northern part of Ghana and Asen Manso in here being the largest during the era of the trade. Stolen Africans that were captured from the upper borders of Ghana, like Burkina Faso, Mali, Niger, and some parts of Nigeria were first made to walk in chains and shackles, barefooted and half naked to the Salaga market at the north. It was in the Salaga market that we were given the first opportunity to rest just for a few days and again made to walk from Salaga in chains and shackles to Ascent Manso in the air, which was 300 miles by foot. During that era, because our ancestors were marching through the forest part of the country, a lot of our brothers and sisters were exposed to many dangers while marching us from the north down to Ascent Manso. Some of us were beaten by snakes, others were attacked by wild animals, others suffered punishment and cruelty from the slave raiders. So according to our history, when we were walking through the forest, most of these animals fed on our brothers and sisters. But the raiders have a way of pushing the animals back so that they don't attack the few of our brothers and sisters. So what they did was, when they were walking and they found out that two, three, four, five, six of our brothers and sisters were weak and couldn't continue the journey, you weren't killed instantly, no. Rather, you were brought out of your chains and your shackles tie around any big tree they find in the forest left behind to perish. So they used them as bait to negotiate through the forest to ascend also. After that tragedy, they always, our ancestors always lived by the day because they couldn't guarantee what nest was in stock for them. Every day was a day of uncertainty. 
whether I'll be alive or I'll be dead. I can't tell. They thought it was one of their worst treatments was when they were bait, they were chained as they were used as bait. Later did they know that there's a lot, a lot of atrocities and torture ahead. When they crossed that first other, their second was to cross the Pra River. When you go to Kumase from here, you see the river on your way. When they got to that river, it was basically the survivor and the fetus. So those of our brothers and sisters who were weak and couldn't continue with the journey, immediately they got to that river, they were brought out of their chains and shackles and were dumped in that river to die. So every 31st night of July, we always go to that river to have a vigil and mourn our ancestors because the following day being the 1st of August, it's when we Ghana as a nation celebrate our emancipation festival. Now when we landed here at Ascent Manso, this was the place that we were sorted out according to age and sex. In determining our ages, a device called a speculum oris is put into our mat, open our mat, count our teeth, thereby forecasting our ages. Broken bottles were used to shave us. Leaves from a bamboo, which is very itchy, is what we were washed with. After that, we were sold out and made to make the journey from here to the Tekos Dungeons, which was 35 miles from here, because that was where the slave ship was being done. During that era, Wherever we were captured, it was a match of no return. You're going back from your route, you're going from your route, and you're never coming back. So when you are taken through the dungeons of the castle, there is a particular door with the inscription, the door of no return. So basically when you pass through that door, you look back and you remember all the pain, the torture, the atrocities, your loved ones that you left behind. You remember all of them. But when you look ahead, the only thing that you see is the Atlantic Ocean. Even when you were on the land, you endured this pain. How much more going through the Atlantic Ocean that you don't even know where your, destina your destination will be? So I always say to myself, there's no psychologist in this world that could cite our brothers in that era of time because it was so much and it, it is the worst form of human rights abuse this world has ever suffered. Now with the Europeans, they always rely on one particular thing and we Africans should also rely on the other. In communication, we have two forms of communication. We have the verbal and we have the non-verbal type of communication. For me, I call the verbal the physical and I call the non-verbal the spiritual. These Europeans basically rely on the physical aspect of, aspect of communication. But most of us, because we are not conscious, we always get irritated when they come to us and they use all these words on us. They come to you with the words of deceit and tell you, Mom, you're inferior. You're good for nothing. This color is nothing. You're nobody. They use all sorts of words on us. It's a deception, it's a strategy that they are adopting on us. But because most of the times we become bitter that is what they want, to, they want to get from us. Because when you are bitter, it is very difficult for you, to be, for you to win your cases. But when you are better, 
it is not. That is why we have to concentrate more on the non-verbal aspects of communication, which I call the spiritual aspect of communication. Ask yourself this question. If you say I am inferior, if you say I'm good for nothing, then why are you fighting me for everything? Mm -hmm. If you say I'm nobody, why are you discriminating on me of anything that you think of? Racism and other things. So when we focus more on the non-verbal aspect of their communication, that is where we will know how powerful we are. Look at it in the White House. Why do you even name the place the White House? Just the verbal aspect of communication. To deceive people for people to know because that is what we always listen. But for me, when you tell me you love me, mom, I don't listen to what you say to me. I look at you, your body language, your positioning, your facial expression, and I'll be able to tell to myself, yes, you mean what, what you say. The White House, they always come out to tell everybody white, white, why? Because they are white out. And everybody say, this is white, this is white, this is white. But the nonverbal aspect of the White House communication is that we built the White House. We built from the foundations. And if it is not for us, the White House could not stand. So that they tell you, they tell us we are nobody. Why do they even tell us not to come to our roots? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see, for over 400 years now, they've been trying to eliminate you, mm -hmm. oppress you, kill you, do all sorts, of things, all sorts of things against us. But they can't. So they always ask themselves this simple question, which if I were in their shoes, I would ask anyway. What is it at all about these people? That the more we try bringing them down, the more we try oppressing them, the more we try putting some inferiority complex on them, they are always rising. So in attempt to get answers to that question, because they are deceitful, they come back to us again for our own answers. But still, we are not conscious because we did, so we don't know, we don't even know. They come to you again and say, Mom, you know something? Don't go back to your roots. Because that place is full of poverty, diseases, blah, blah, blah. They always tell us this. But I guess when you were in the plane coming here, you saw a lot of them in the plane coming here as well. And did you ever ask yourself, why do they always tell us not to be here, but for them, they are always here? Do you know the answers that I always get? Kofi, they are coming here for gold and diamond. And sometimes I laugh. I say, no, they're never coming for that. They are coming for you. Mm. Because how can I defeat you if I don't have much information about you? Mm -hmm. How can I defeat you if I don't know what spirit is with you? What makes you tick? What makes you happy? What makes you sad? How can I defeat if I don't have all this information? So their coming here is more of an information-seeking agenda. But yours is more than that. Yours is spirituality. That is why you're here. So, that writings on the walls of the dungeons, the door of no return, it's not a door for us. Because with the door of no return, they believed that we are never, ever going to come back alive and tell the story as it is. Mm -hmm. That is why they made our ancestors go through all this inhuman act. But one thing that they forgotten, that the spirit is always with us, the spirit is with us, and forever the spirit will be with us. Mm -hmm. They thought our culture and traditions as Africans will be clean forever. In the U.S. of A, from the 1970s, they told you to drop everything natural about yourself mm -hmm. and embrace everything about them. But one thing they also forget to know, that we Africans are genetically coded. Mm -hmm. So in diverse ways, we are still portraying our culture. Mm -hmm. the, most important, that they, the most important thing they wanted to achieve is to eliminate the African race from their setting. All this discrimination and the racism that we found ourselves in, it's never a joke because they did it to us before in Argentina when systematically they took the black race out of their community. 
But today, you and I are conscious to know ourselves, to know our ancestors that fought for us, to know the spirit that is in us. So there is a need for us to change that perception, that writings on the walls of the dungeons, from the door of no return that favors them to the door of return which favors us. Because today, I have my beautiful brothers and sisters, mothers coming back to their roots as at when they love to return. We've defined all odds and we are still back to our roots. But the question is, how do we change that writings on the walls of the dungeons from the door of no return to the door of return? That is why, as you can see in our ancestral graveyard, we have the mortal remains of our two great ancestors. I sometimes don't understand why they use words like we rebel. These people are rebellious. Sometimes I don't understand. We don't really, we are not rebellious. We are freedom fighters. Mm -hmm. okay. We fought for our freedom. So you don't call me a rebel. I am a freedom fighter. Madam Crystal was a young lady. She was born out of slavery. But once growing up, she saw all that we endured, the pains, the torture, the murder. She saw all that. So in a way, she said, if my ancestors are going to bless me to get a little older, I'm going to stand and fight against the act. The, our ancestors listened to him, listened to her, and they granted a wish. One of the remarkable things she did was to think about us, but not about herself, by starving herself to death. During that era, whenever you do that, there is a punishment which is murdered on you to serve as a deterrent from your other captives from doing the same. They chisel your teeth and they force you to feed which is called the force feeding. Mm -hmm. This and other punishments, Madam Krista, a young lady, had to go through for us. But because she was doing for us, she stood firm, didn't take in anything until she lost her life. We have the descendants of Madam Krista visiting everything 7th of December, just to pour libation and say to their ancestors, Medase which means thank you. At the far end, we have Samuel Carson, the first African-American to rise to the highest rank in the US Navy. Died at the age of 35, but he wasn't given a befitting barrier because he was one of us. Not until 1998, nobody was allowed to go through this path. This site was so sacred that it was only the chiefs and the priests that were allowed to go in there. So, when this facility was opened for the public in 1998, their families consulted our Ministry of Tourism and told us about the wish of their great-grandparents. That it was in their wish that they needed to be buried right on their ancestral route. So, in collaboration with the two families and our Ministry of Tourism, their mortal remains was flown in from Jamaica and US to the Kutuka International Airport, then by boat through the Atlantic Ocean to the Cape Coast Dungeons, passing through all the channels, coming out of the door of no return to change it to the door of return on the 31st day of July 1998. It was a great day, but we mourned them. Everybody in the community was made to wear black and red to mourn our ancestors. The following day, being the 1st of August, these two of our great ancestors were buried here. So every 1st of August, is when Ghana as a nation, we decided to celebrate our Emancipation Festival. And during that celebration, all tourist sites in Cape Coast stand still just to observe the Emancipation here. We would have loved to have the mortal remains of all our brothers and sisters in the diaspora buried here. But just imagine, it's too small to accommodate all of us. So this particular place is a sacred ground that 
we've left it out for people to have their ashes sprinkled on that land. Mm. So it's not just the mortal remain of Madame Christa and some cousin, but hundreds of our ancestors have their ashes sprinkled in there. So you can't even go in with your shoes on. It's always be your shoes off. When you look further, you realize there's another tomb that is under construction. After it's the last, the last one. It was brought in here on the 14th day of November by the Prime Minister of Barbados, Amo Motley. She said it was a soil from a sacred slave cemetery at Barbados. Why she brought them here was simple and beautiful. For her, she knows that our ancestors are wandering around. They needed to have a peaceful rest. So she brought them in here for them to have a peaceful rest. Now, during the era of the trade, some of our brothers and sisters engaged in it. But majority were against the trade. So those of us that were against the trade were seen as rebels and we were equally targeted and killed. Because we weren't having the sophisticated weapons as that of the raiders, then we have to map strategies to defend ourselves, our communities, and our children. So when you go to Gulu, a community at the northern part of Ghana, they built defense walls around their communities just to prevent intruders from getting to them. Another group moved to the mountainous areas. So when they are on top of the mountain and they see the raiders coming, they just throw stones at them so that they don't, they don't get to them. Others also lived in caves. But those that were in the caves grew one beautiful plant and that plant saved uh, most saved their life. And the name of the plant is the mimosa plant. Mimosa plant. Mimosa. Yes. It's not a drink, it's a plant. Some call it the shy, shy plant. Some call it the sensitive one. Some call it shema old lady. And some call it some, some, some. So I'll be taking you to the plant and I'll tell you the rule that plant played in our history as Africans. If you don't mind, I'm going to speak tree. This is basically a language from the Ashantis. I will say yanko. Yanko means let's go. So just put the currency, Chinese currency yen, in your head. And just add ko. It means let's go. So please, yanko. Yeah. 